early March in southwest France. Spring's not far off, it's half term, and the Burton Race family's got loads to do because Grandma's visiting for the week. Eve, I'm going out. Don't forget Patsy's coming. I want the whole house clean. I'm not doing it myself. Bye. John's off to the local market, but Patsy, his mother-in-law, is on his mind. Everything's going to change. I've just started to get the kids and everybody into a routine, and uh, she's going to come along and take over. I mean, she works very hard. She means very well, but she's very interfering, like everybody's mother-in-law, and I'm not really looking forward to it at all. John's wife, Kim, is off to Carcassonne and can't wait to meet her mum off the plane from England. I miss my mother a lot. She'll always be there egging me on, get on with it if I'm feeling down, you know. Back home at La Garrigue, Olivia and Martha do Patsy's room. Eve hoovers up, under protest. Patsy loves the house being tidy. Like if you sit down and there's a piece of paper on the floor, everyone has to get up and clean the room until it's spotless. While the girls do the housework, Charles does his own thing. She hates me smoking, but I don't care. I absolutely hate it when Patsy comes over. She drives me bonkers. Escaping to Ravel, John's in heaven. As an overworked chef in London, he never had time to explore markets, so this is a real treat. This is where I get all my inspiration from. Look at all these beautiful ingredients. The one thing the French are really famous for is their bread. There's some lovely breads here. Uh, bonjour, monsieur. Nowadays, fluffy baguettes are everywhere, but traditionally made bread is surprisingly hard to find in France. This stall has just what John's after for his book on French food and for the family dinner table. This bread has been baked in a wood-burning stove, and you can smell the, the wood through the, the bread dough, and it's got a lovely, lovely, lovely crust. So you know, it's, for example, it's been proved for a long, long time. And that smells absolutely delicious. It's a sort of sourdough, this one. Is that the same, no, Monsieur? No, that's the same. I call it rustic because it's levé, but I put a little seigle and a little sarrasin. This is made in a, a similar way, but with different flours. And there's sort of 50 seigle, which is rye flour, and 50% wheat flour. Again, proved slowly and cooked in a, a wood burning fire, but there's a different smell about it. It's, it's almost nutty. 50 miles away, Patsy has landed. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. How are you? Fine. How much of fun? Oh, real drag. How are the kids? Fine. They just Where are they? They're at home. They wanted okay. to come, but there wasn't enough room for everybody. Oh. Ça c'est bon avec les huîtres. Now this is a very heavy wheat-based bread, uh, black wheat-based bread, which is fantastic with fish or oysters or shellfish. Uh, le bâti aussi. Uh, no, un, un petit morceau. Oui, pas problème. Bread is the thing that um, I want to learn about next. It's the thing that I want to explore and get into so that uh, I can write some of the old recipes up before they're lost forever in the book. Yeah, I'm working on some uh, bread recipes at home at the moment, um, and I'm going to try them all out on the children and see if they can get as enthusiastic about it as I am. Merci beaucoup. It's welcome time at La Garrigue. Oh, hello! Ooh, hello, Amelia! They're going to love it. I'm probably going to hate it. Patsy and I get on as long as I'm in France and she's in London. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for me anyway. Oh, God, here we are. Talk of the devil. It never rains, but it pours. It's oh, yeah. Hello, Say hello, Fendi. yes, I will. Ask. Hello, Fendi. Oh, hello, Patsy. How are you? Hello, John. Goodness me, you've got a lot of bags. Yeah, <laughs> got lots of goodies in there. You must be coming to stay for a long time. Yeah, I hope to. Ten Good. Years. Charles, get the Ten door, please. Ten years, he said. Charles. <laughs> Patsy always brings treats, the kind John calls junk food. Her stay will mean a week-long battle for the children's hearts, stomachs, and minds. <sighs> Up at dawn next day, John starts to fight back against Patsy. His opening salvo is French-style walnut bread, with walnuts and flour from the Languedoc. Now, the granary flour will give you the texture. It's got little bits of wheat in it. And then, for the strength, I'll put buckwheat flour into it. 
not too much of this though because it's really really strong and the bread will be like old boots if you put too much in it. Baking bread is fantastic. I love the smell of bread cooking. I love the first break of the crust and, and the steam that comes out of the bread when it's cooked. Gradually add the lukewarm water to the flour. If you've got a machine, you can do it by machine. I like to do it by hand because if you switch on a machine at this time of the morning, no one will thank you for it. For 10 minutes of this, we'll get rid of your beer gut or your red wine gut in my case. And put it somewhere warm so that it can prove for about half an hour. I used the airing cupboard upstairs. In her bedroom, Patsy prepares her counter-attack. White bread, Olivia, and the E like that one. And this is Kim's favourite bread. It's medium sliced, white. Okay, this is it. It's come up about two or three times its original size. It's light. There's nothing much to do to it now. Just cut it straight down the middle. Don't fold or bash it or knead it at all. Just turn it on its side. Big beans for Eliza. Charles likes his mama. Biscuits again for Charles. Drizzle a little walnut oil over the top and put it on top of the warm oven to prove and rise for about 20 minutes. Olivia loves chocolate, so these are for her. And, um, well, these are Kim's favourite. And Charles, that's what he misses, the pork pies. To be so happy to get this, especially these biscuits and stuff. You know, they've got, all got sweet tooth. That is the best warmed up bread in the south of France. Isn't that? Yeah. Smells nice. Who would like a very big slice of all that bread? Charles, would you like a piece? Bye. 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 Oops, See, I'm trying to teach him good Brian's food. He's been asking me every day yeah. on the phone for all these things. So oh, thank you, Mum. We get them on my he's, he's having pork pie. She's having chocolate biscuits for breakfast. What about and my bread? I've been working on this for three hours. Tea. Tea. Well, it's well. your favourite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think Dad's a bit upset because no one's eating his bread. Yeah. Yeah. Traitor here. Well, the beans. No, thanks. Martha's making good use of the English food. Five o'clock in the morning. I've better things to do. Thanks very much. <laughs> Sunday morning at La Garrigue. Patsy's up first, cleaning, and she's everywhere. She tries to get into the kitchen and she tries to change things about. She tries to put things where they're not supposed to be. That's my domain. No one goes there. Not even my mum would go there. And my mum's tough. Come on, we're late. Come on. Come on, Eve, please step it up. Come on, Eliza. What's worse, Patsy wants the entire family to go somewhere they haven't been for a very long time. Church. Pick him up, pick him up. I need to go to church like a hole in the head. Eliza, we're late. Can you hear the bell? And if I was going to do anything apart from sit back and enjoy a nice lunch, it would be go for a walk with the dog or perhaps go fishing. Getting ready as a family, getting our best bib and tucker on and getting ready on time is difficult enough, there's too many of us. But getting everybody to behave themselves, not to shout, in Charles's case, not to swear, that's going to be even more tough. And in a church environment with Patsy making sure that I'm smiling and the kids are behaving themselves, it's going to be tense. You'll be able to cut the atmosphere with a knife. Et que ton peuple connaisse la joie now, I know that Patsy is a devout Catholic, but I'm not. I can't remember the last time the children went, or we all went as a family, to church. Whatever I do, 
I've got to be careful I don't put a foot wrong or say the wrong thing at the wrong time and have the wrong expression on my face, otherwise Pats will jump straight down my throat. <laughs> they all try to smile for Patsy, but church is not a hit with the children. And with six to control, there's always one that gets away. Put that, out. Put that bag out right now. This is the church, get it out. If Patsy sees that, we're dead. Go round the corner. You're smoking outside the church. That's disrespectful. Eve, I'm warning you. Eve, smoking. Eve, put that cigarette out. I told you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Monday, you'll be sorry. Yeah, one day, you'll be sorry. A couple of days later, John's even up before the French larks. Desperate to escape Patsy, he's off again on his quest for authentic French bread, the sort he wants to write up in his book on the food of the Languedoc. I want to get into a proper bakery and look, listen, watch, taste and learn how to do it properly because I feel that eventually, sooner rather than later, this sort of bastion of tradition is going to fall apart. While the rest of France is still asleep, John arrives in the neighbouring village of Sorez for a rendezvous with the baker of his dreams, Bart Mesquin, who's been up since 3 a.m. Finding this guy's been tough, because he's one in a million. And what makes him unique is that he uses a wood-burning oven, circa 1900, and that must be one of only about a handful in the whole of France. That's how you... He uses trimmings of oak. He's also got some uh, poplar or plane trees in here. And this wood will make all the difference to the flavour of the bread, and it's absolutely fantastic. Always with these recipes, how much flour do you put into 30 litres of water? He said he doesn't know, he does it with his eye. Now we're going to make some croissant and some pain au chocolat. We're going to put the butter into the middle of the dough and then fold it over with one, two, three, four. And that's just to make sure that the butter's incorporated properly into the dough in sort of like leaves or layers. That's what you like doing, and this is what I like doing. And then um, roll it out. This is the, uh, the sort of job that you could give the kids to do. I know Charles would love to do this. Comme ça, c'est bon? C'est bon, John. Just look at the state of me, look. Eh? Normal, John. C'est normal. Bon, on fait les croissants. Ouais. Ensuite, on fera le chocolatine. Chocolatine. Okay, fine. Mais par contre, John, ça, les croissants tout seul. No problem, mate. So basically, he's rolled out the croissant dough, the whole length of the table, and cut triangle shapes, the width of a hand. And then it's an incision about one inch nick in each triangle. Ici, je touche pas. Moi, ici. All right, this is the technical bit. So, comme ça, un petit peu, voilà, comme ça, yes. Et après, yeah. avec le pomme de ta main, comme ça, voilà. Oh, this is some technique. Comme ça, d'accord. Yeah, right. That's it, Bonjour. Oh, not easy this croissant log. <laughs> you can do that one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> John, les yeux fermés. No, and now he's showing up. <laughs> he's making them with his eyes closed now. John and Bart prepare 75 pain au chocolat, 200 croissants, and 140 loaves. A lot of it is about feel, smell, touch, you know, taste, texture. And to get behind that is really tough. Bart says that there's nothing better to touch. Um, I can think of one or two things actually that might be slightly better, but uh, it does feel nice. <laughs> right, I'm not going to translate that last bit. <laughs> oh, <I don't> <laughs> Perfect, look. While the children stay at home, the women go shopping in Ravel. Kim's on a far tighter budget than she used to be in England, but she's a true blue townie who just loves a good, long shop. The biggest thing I've bought myself lately is lipstick. 
and a couple of soups that John doesn't know about when I went up to Toulouse. Mm. And what about the beauty parlour? Have you been there? Uh, a couple of times. Uh. I do miss the shops and I suppose if given half the chance, I'd love to go back into a big shopping centre in England and go crazy with John's credit card. It's quite a good price, but if I bought something as frivolous as this, he'd go crazy. Would he? Back at the bakery, things are overrunning. High time for Bart to get the embers out and the bread in. When he pulls this out, puts it in the bucket, it carries on burning for two days. Now, I've seen nothing like this in my life. Rough luck. He can get 200 loaves of bread in the oven at one go. That's the biggest oven I've ever come across, I can tell you. As you put the bread in, obviously the oven's getting cooler. So you've got to work as fast as you possibly can. Tack! Hey, what up? I think it'd be lovely as bedroom chairs. Uh, yeah, are they meant for bedroom? Yeah, I'd say so. While John sweats his guts out, Kim spends some rather big money on her current retail fetish. Old chairs. £1,800. It looks beautiful. It smells beautiful. And it tastes even better. Not bad for a Brit. Man, wife and mother-in-law head back to La Garrigue. But John hasn't a clue what awaits him. I think this is one of the best days I've had since I've been in France. I've got some great uh, tips from Bart about what to do and what not to do. And the proof's in the cooking and the bread was good. Oh, no, she's done it again. She's bought another bloody chair. Hello, what's that? It's a chair. No, but what is it? Yeah, I can see it's a chair. What's it for? I bought it. What for? Oh, for Patsy? No. It's your birthday? No, for us. Uh -huh. I thought it'd be nice if I uh, stripped it down and had it recovered. But we don't need another check. Kim, I keep telling you, you keep spending money on these loony things. What's it for? You're always in such a bad mood. No, I was in a very good mood. I've had a very good day. I come round the driveway and there's chairs hanging off the back of a <laughs> cabriolet. This is not an estate car. And I bet you scratched it. I haven't. Well, I wash it, so I'll find out. I haven't. Scratch. The man put the material. Yeah. What man? Because the man He's said if you scratch it. Every time I turn my back, there's another chair. And we can't afford it. Can you hold my bread dough, please? It's look, it's look. Don't, oh, don't it. destroy it. Leave it, for God's sake. I'm not destroying it. It's broken. They say it's not broken. It stinks. Look. It's not. It's old. It's old, yeah. yeah. I'm, and I'm getting and old before my lucky. time. The back's falling off, Kim. Before chairs, it was shoes. Do you know how many pairs of shoes my wife's got? It's nearly a hundred. And do you know what? I prefer it when it was shoes, because one, they're a lot cheaper and you don't have to have them recovered. And two, there's more room to put shoes away. Where do you put 20 chairs? What the hell are you doing? What's this? Patsy, have you seen this? You brought this stuff over. Look at it. That's their lunch. What are you doing? I burst through the kitchen doors and the kids are sitting there gorging out on chocolate and snacks. You put that away in the freezer. You didn't touch it. You chopped it all over your mouth, chocolate on your hands and you didn't touch anything. This cheese, what's that from? Is that you? Who is it? Me. I want to kill somebody, and I know that's probably illegal. And you shout, and you look like the ogre. Yes, Patsy? Nice balanced meal? Yeah, right, yeah. It's really embarrassing. You know, I'm, I'm an ex-chef trying to do a cookery book in France, the home of good food, and they're sitting there eating dairy milk chocolate. Well, how would you, th how would you feel? To get the children back on the straight and narrow, John picks what should be a hit for the family supper. We're going to make something called a pisaladier. Can you say that? Pisaladier. That's it. Now, what it is, it's like a pizza with onions and anchovies, that's fish, and black olives. Yeah? Yeah. This dish is, um, originates from the south of France. It, it's a great dish. It's a, probably a light snack dish, a light evening meal or a light summer's lunch. OK, the pan's flat out now. I've got my olive oil in there, the onions are well frying, and then a big knob of butter. Straight in, a bay leaf, a clove of garlic, and some thyme. A little bit of salt, and some pepper. And the beauty of this is that you can just leave it for 10 minutes with the lid on. 
This dough is from Bart, the baker, up in uh, Sores. Hmm. Do you want a minute? <laughs> right, now dust the tray. Dust you. Get away. Now I want you to roll it out to about there. Mm -hmm. uh, Liza, I want you to do something for me. Get an olive, right? Look. And then get the, the pip out. Uh, and put... The seed, and put the olives in there, uh, and the pip in the bin. Four, Abby, I'm doing it. Look at the olives. I'll we'll get some more anchovies. Hang on a second. You've got and the olives? Uh, Dad! But this is what Dad I'm likes. I'm doing the olives. Daddy, I've only got one left. Dad. That's fine. Let's just pour this oil over the top. It's got all the lovely flavour of the anchovies in it. Long so, do you feel pleased with yourselves? Mm-hmm. We'll just put it in the oven. <laughs> you did very well. Well done. Do you want to make your own? Yeah! Hey! Ah! Dusting the flour. Are they ready to go in the oven? No. Onto the tray. Do you want to push it? Maybe? Being out here cooking for the children, cooking for Kim, is very humbling. How does mine look, Dad? It looks different. And this is where it, is right. it brings you firmly down to earth. Some of the things the kids tell me about my cooking, no one would dare tell me in London. They wouldn't dare. They, absolutely not. And, well, not if I could hear them. But children strip it all off. They either enjoy it or they don't enjoy it. Right, now I'm and they tell you straight. Me, I'll get you off the tin out here. Not bad for a three year old, look. Oh, I'll let you piece, I'll let you piece, please. Not too much. The pisaladier gets the thumbs up from everyone, even Patsy. It's a knockout punch for John. Thank you. What do you think? A couple of days later, Patsy's off home to England. And as far as John's concerned, she can't leave a moment too soon. I'm glad and pleased because so we can get back to some normality so I can get them, the kids, back on course, getting on with living in France. Now, I know it's been great for the kids, but it hasn't been great for me, and bye-bye. In the next episode of French Leave, the children get a bit cheesed off. Dad, I have a small piece. I just don't like goats too much. John makes some new friends. Let me out of here. Do smart, John. Do smart. Okay, I'm being told off now. I could have, I could have been a lot calmer than I am. I've just been headbutted. But when he brings home a new addition to the family, it gets Kim's goat. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> goat left to go or John will go with the goat and take that car with him as well. Yucky food.